Hey guys, in this video we will discuss the difference between the reverse proxy and a load balancer. Some of you guys asked this question and I thought it's appropriate to actually make a video about it. Uh, so personally, I think I'd like to think of a load balancer as one of the applications of a reverse proxy. It is just a special case of the reverse proxy. So let's just get started and define what a reverse proxy is first. All right, before we start, guys, I have made a, a very popular video uh, between the difference between a proxy and a reverse proxy. I suggest that you watch that video. I, I actually explain the difference between a proxy and the benefits and disadvantages of proxy and reverse proxy. Uh, I, I'm going to link it here in the description and in the card, hopefully. So let's get uh, just quickly define what a reverse proxy is first, right? So a reverse proxy is this a piece of software, it's a logic or server, that receives client's request and hides the back-end infrastructure of the outgoing request. So if a client's going to, uh, like say, google.com, uh, there is a, a front-end server that receives that request and then forwards it to internal servers, one or more, uh, to essentially service that request. Okay, it's a very basic thing. And just just the fact adding that extra layer gave a lot of advantages. Just this extra layer of instead of having the client con connect to the server that has the application directly, right? That runs whatever port. The advantage is like just add this middle layer and we called it a reverse proxy because it's, it's, it's exactly like it's a reverse proxy, right? So the client doesn't know which server is connecting as for the proxy the server doesn't know which client it is coming from is that okay so it's, it's like actually the reverse all right so a lot of benefits and applications of the reverse proxy is you can do cache web acceleration so if i'm requesting to go to my blog we say nasr.com uh Reverse proxy can actually make the first request to the server, to my blog, pull the content of my blog, and actually cache it right here. So the next guy or the next girl that want to consume my blog, that reverse proxy will say, hmm, I actually have a copy of this. Here you go. I don't have to go and bother the server and execute and waste bandwidth, network bandwidth and network resources and uh, server resources, right? It's just like go there. So caching, very important. Canary deployment, very popular things, A-B testing kind of thing, where uh, I want to experiment with my application. I, may, I made a feature, I made a new change, but I wanted to test like um, 10% of my traffic so the reverse proxy can act like a uh, like for if for 10 percent of the request incoming go and forward them to this particular server which has a certain version of my application the 90 percent will go to another uh, server right and that's that's the beauty of this you can just uh, obviously there are rules to this right so you have your application should not be breaking changes right it doesn't have breaking change so the request and response should be identical because the client uh, has to just consume that and, and magically know how to do with it right so canary deployment very popular right so i can just shift based on that uh, security against external traffic i can since this is an external facing right I can secure that but since this is internal I can leave this unsecure if I want to it's recommended to secure it obviously but you can you can avoid doing SSL and expensive security handshake with your internal network because it is kind of isolated right it, there's a firewall there nobody actually can access from outside right it's a completely internal uh, delimitized zone okay so that's one benefit of the reverse proxy isolation it's completely isolated of the 
entire world cannot be uh, hidden uh, uh, easily, right? And that's another benefit is like a single entry URL. So if you build an application and oh one port one application is running on this port, or right? another instance of your application running on another front port, you can just do the reverse proxy, run it on a single port, and then have it just go through different uh, applications, which. Uh, even if you you don't even have to have like multiple servers like just one server running on one port right but I don't want to use that port I want to use port 80 to expose it to the outside war and I want to secure it so you can just use just the single uh, URL that points to essentially your server the backend and finally one of the benefits of a reverse proxy is you can if you want to make your reverse proxy as a load balancer right because it's again it receives a request and if you put some metadata some knowledge some work on your reverse proxy it can act like a load balancer essentially balancing that distributes the load between different requests to your different servers all right this brings us to the load balancer so what's the difference between load balancer and a reverse proxy so we, we explain what a reverse proxy right, right, is right a load balancer is just an instance of a reverse proxy it is a reverse proxy okay but it has like a special characteristic right I don't, I don't i don't believe i said that correctly <laughs> Right, so it has a special meaning here. So a load balancer, obviously, since it's balancing the load, it has to have two or more servers to balance, right, at the back end. So it still acts the same as a reverse proxy. It's receiving something from outside war and just, like, distributes the load between these servers. So one request goes to this, the second goes to this, and so on, right? So it has to be two or more. For the reverse proxy... You don't have to have two servers. You can have one, right? You can just deal. You can literally have one, and this is still called a reverse proxy. And then the reason is like, hey, I want to hide my port. I don't want to expose. I want. I want these. Oh, <laughs> I want these five things. I don't want load balancing, but I want all that. And reverse proxy gives you all these, right? Load balancer doesn't usually give you all these benefits too. Okay, so load balancer also need to store some metadata about your application if you think about it, right? Because uh, if you if there is a request, right, and then let's say server one, uh, I forward it to server one, and server one start executing it, I have to. There are many ways to load balance first, right? The dumbest way, the simplest one, is to do a round robin where every request comes and then just go to the next one okay request go to the next one request go to the third and then one two three one two three there is no smart ways just distributes the load right it doesn't know if the server is down it doesn't know if the server is overloaded it doesn't know anything right that's one way load balance. another kind of load balancer is smart load balancer can actually collect data does heartbeats like every it just co continues to communicate with the server so hey this server how what are you doing now it's like you can ask hey i'm actually executing this many requests maybe don't send me a lot of requests right oh this server is free so it just keeps kind of a table kind of a data of all these different uh, metadata of all the servers and accordingly balances the load all right guys hope that, hope you enjoyed this episode it's just like it was like very brief and to, to talk about the difference between reverse proxy and the load balancer hope you enjoyed this i'm gonna see you in the night check out the other content in this channel we talk about a lot of software engineering by example as you can see and uh we're gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome consider subscribing we have a lot of cool software engineering that's what we talk about in this channel. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.